Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Friday, May 19th, 2017. This video is about the four spills using the impaired main spillway at the Orville Dam. And it's an interesting day to do this video because it's um, the last day of the fourth and hopefully final spill of the season. And with the closing of the gates today, the contracted repair work to the spillway structure can begin. So while I play this footage from February 12th, evacuation day, I will give you some background information uh, about today's video. A few weeks after I returned home from being evacuated because of the spillway incident in February, I started publishing some YouTube videos showing the downstream perspective on the flows coming down the Feather River from Oroville. I recorded footage after every spill and for this video I've compiled some of that footage. It tells a story about a place at the river 30 miles downstream from the Oroville Dam. And I want to say that when I describe a spill I count the days from the time the spillway gates open until they close. Because actually, even though river releases can start, um, well, river releases can start increasing before the gates are even open. And the river can be not even totally drawn down by the time the gates close because the dam operators can manipulate the, re the releases uh, through the diversion dam and the Thermalito after bay outlet so that they can uh, make more gradual changes to the flows. So spill number one was actually an off and on spill as the releases were adjusted um, to various levels of outflow due to the damage to the uh, main spillway and the emergency spillway shown here. So um, the maximum releases for the spill in February, what was sent down the river was 100,000 cubic feet per second. So let me go to the next. Um, they closed the gates uh, for that spill in February they closed the gates on February 27th and I have a video uh, that I took on March 11th after they had closed the the gates in February just to give you an idea of uh, some comparison areas as we go through the rest of these spills so this as I said I took this footage on um, March 11th after the first spill was over and like other places by the river here downstream uh, this area at this time was still recuperating from uh, the rain the storms and the high releases from Oroville so this will give you an idea of what this area looked like and you'll see uh, quite a bit of uh, debris and the, the sand is roughed up and the, the dirt uh, some drying has already occurred but you can see that there's there's been high water there when the water was flowing at a hundred thousand cubic feet per second it was up on the levee quite a ways so all, all of these tree trunks were covered and um, so when the water receded uh, it drug a lot of stuff with it and, and roughed up uh, the terrain. So just keep that in mind as we go through the four spills. There were uh, four spills we're looking at. Um, spills 1, 2, 3, and 4 February, March, April, and May. And um, the March spill 
started on March 17th. That's when they opened the gates. And this was a 10 day spill. Here it shows the, the gates opening and they closed the gates on the 27th. So as I said, it was a 10 day spill and the maximum release down the spillway was 50,000 cubic feet per second. So I went to the river to see what 50,000 cubic feet per second looked like. And this is what it looked like. So the area that I had just shown you, uh, now you can see um, there's a big rock that's usually visible here. And the water's creeping up. Definitely, you can't see the river bank. It's, it's over in here somewhere. So the water is out of its banks. And I'll pause it right here. So you can see that it's now up on these trees. A, a good part of the bottom of the tree trunks are uh, covered in water and here you can see the levee where at a hundred thousand it's up on the levee and it's not quite there yet it's 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 sort of there in in this area back in here and then you can see some uh, sludge if I continue this you'll see the the buildup of sludge down here in the bottom right corner So that's 50,000 cubic feet per second. Let's see. So what I did is, um, after they closed the gates on the 27th of March, I went down on the 30th, a few days later, and I took some photos. So I'll just play the slideshow that I took um, photos for that day. And as you can see, there's a lot of, uh, as the 50,000 cubic feet per second was drawn down, it also made some changes to the, to the terrain of the river in this area. And you can see there's mud here. There's a lot of sand in this particular area of the river, but uh, there's also some regular dirt and river mud, and it's uh, uh, still muddy. It never really dried out from February, and here it is the end of March, and it, it's still very wet. And there you'll see the a lot of the debris that's been stirred up and left behind as the water comes up and then goes back down again. There's sand and mud. A little bit of dried out part here, but still very muddy and wet sand. So let's see. The next thing to happen is two weeks later, on April 14th, the third spill. So here it comes down the spillway. And this spill was a 17 day spill, so quite a few days. It started on the 14th of April and ran until May 1st. and. The river releases were 35,000 cubic feet per second to start, and then uh, about 10 days into the spill, they raised the releases up to about 43,000. So let me show you here. When I went down to the river on, let's see, when did I go down there? On the 21st. So a week after they started this spill, I went down to the river. And this is what 35,000 cubic feet per second looks like. 
at this place in the river. And you'll see the regular spots that we've been looking at. River's not within its banks. It's not quite up on the trees yet at 35,000 cubic feet per second. And of course, uh, we've looked at when it was um, at 50,000, it was up on these tree trunks. So this was 35,000 cubic feet per second. And then I went down there. When did I go here? Another week later to see what 43,000 cubic feet per second look like. And you can see the rock is about halfway underwater. There's sludge building up. This is 43,000 cubic feet per second. Coming down from Moraville. So, as I turn the camera, you'll see the, the tree area. And the water's getting on up there. So this was April 28th, and they ended the spill on May 1st, and then I went back to the river on May 9th, which was eight days after they ended that third spill because I wanted to take a look and see how things were going because I knew they were going to start another spill on the 10th the next day after this video was taken. So as you can see uh, the water's down between its banks. Some drying out is happening but there's an awful lot of erosion right there and um, all along there. Actually at this point it was, let me see what the, 7,700 cubic feet per second. So that's a very uh, normal flow because the spillway's closed. So that's on May 9th, just before they start the next spill, and I'll show you that. May 10th starts the fourth spill. That starts off slowly as usual. It was a nine day spill and uh, the gates were opened on the 10th of May and they were closed today, May 19th. The maximum river releases for this spill was 27,000 cubic feet per second, but this went to 5,000 and then this is 30,000 cubic feet per second down the spillway because they released 30,000 down the spillway but we only ever saw 27,000 of that downstream because they held some of that back in the after bays or in the after bay so I went down to the river on the 16th. So the spill had been going for almost a week and I went down to the river to see how things were going and actually it had peaked at 27,000 cubic feet per second and by the time I got down here it was 21,000. So this is 21,000 cubic feet per second you can see where it had been at the 27,000. It's still very, very wet. 
and it had just been drawn down uh, by that that amount at this time so you can still see the the really really wet part from from that and then let me show you here um, this is the same day this is the uh, 16th six days after they uh, had turned on the spillway and I'll just let this go for a little while and as you can see there's erosion along this section of riverbank and during these four spillway releases there have been collapses of some banks down here uh, it's called the yo-yo effect because repeated up and down changes in the water flows can result in the riverbanks not having the proper time to dry and they lose their structure and ultimately collapse. Places along the river that you might visit would have different uh, river bank and channel configurations and they would have different types of soils and vegetation. Um, so while this area that I've shown you is not necessarily representative of all areas next to the river. Uh, I, I feel it does provide a good example of some of the effects uh, that changing water flows coming out of Oroville have on the river and, and its uh, banks down downstream. So I will close this video as they close the gates on the fourth and what we hope is the final spill of this season and I want to give credit to Department of Water Resources for footage of the spillway and I'd like to thank my viewers for viewing my videos and I hope that you will like subscribe and share and I will leave you with this uh, final shot of the spillway as it is today, May 19th, closing up those gates on the last spill. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you later.